Welcome everyone to our humorous speech contest. Our contest chair, Fatima Jones, joined Toastmasters in August of 2009 and earned her DTM in May of 2019. She is an active member of two clubs, Perryland Toastmasters and Young Professional Southwest Toastmasters. Fatima is currently serving District 56 as an area director and a club mentor. Please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster, Fatima Jones. Thank you, Toastmaster Carey, for that very kind introduction. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I am honored to serve as contest chair today. So what is this contest all about? In addition to having fun, it has two purposes. It's to provide an opportunity for speakers to improve their speaking abilities and to recognize the best as encouragement to all of us. Second, it's to provide an opportunity for all of us to learn by observing the most proficient speakers who have benefited from their Toastmaster training. I have to say, when I heard that introduction by Toastmaster Caraway, I smiled when I heard it, because it said that it took me 10 years to get my DTM. Hey, what's up with that, Fatima? Well, Rome wasn't built in a day. This reminds me of a joke I heard just last night. A Roman soldier walked into a bar and held up two fingers and said, I like, and then, beers please, and then became totally angry when he didn't receive the five beers he ordered. The Roman soldier. <laughs> so my journey, the 10 year journey on the path to receive my DTM was a journey of determination, consistent effort, and I faced many challenges in overcoming them. Achieving my DTM was a dream, along with earning an MBA degree. Success also needs time, effort, and patience. I encourage you all not to give up on your dream, whatever it may be. I will conclude my opening comments with a quote from Mark Twain, who said, humor is a great thing. It's a saving thing. The minute it crops up, all our irritations and resentments just slip away and a sunny spirit takes place. So at this time, I'd like to introduce our Toastmaster who will lead us through the rest of this contest. Our Toastmaster for today is John Kuhn. John Kuhn is the 2020-2021 Area N23 Director. He is a member of Blue Frog Toastmasters and Honeywell Toastmasters, where he also serves as a club coach. John has been a Toastmaster for over eight years. He has completed his Motivational Strategies Pathway Level 5 and is working toward his Effective Coaching Level 3. Outside of Toastmasters, he runs marathons and he has completed competed in five marathon, marathons. Please help me welcome our humorous contest Toastmaster of the day, John Kuhn. Good morning, good afternoon, Toastmasters. I am honored to be the humorous contest Toastmaster today. Thank you for joining us for this virtual event. I, I will say that I'm extra thankful for being here because it's been a little stressful for me recently. You see, I had put all of my spare earnings into an origami business. And I recently found out it folded. Uh, but I'm here and I'm ready to smile. I'm ready to laugh. I'm ready to enjoy this contest. This morning, we have seven contestants representing seven 
divisions of District 56. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of the contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. Our chief judge today is distinguished Toastmaster Keith Romain. Mr. Chief Judge, are all the contestants online? Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, as far as I can tell, yes, and so are the judges. I was having to round up my judges, but they are all online. Thank you. Thank you. Let the humorous contest begin. I will now give the speaking order for the District 56 humorous speech contest. Contestant number one, Antonio Jose Alvarado Rivera, the third. Contestant number two, Joseph Matthew. Contestant number three, Katajia Kendrick. Contestant number four, Wendy Conaway. Contestant number five, Jessica Vanderpool. Contestant number six, John Rich Levine. Contestant number seven, Ellie Hard. We are now ready to hear from our humorous speech contestants. There will be one minute of silence before the first contestant in between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light and provide an audible signal when one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. The chief judge will then notify me with an audible signal when all ballots have been received. Before I announce each contestant, I will give you, I will ask you rather, if you're ready uh, with your video and audio, please give me an audible signal when you are ready. A reminder, individual recording is not permitted without prior written permission of the contestants in Toastmasters International. Please do not create screenshot photos, audio recordings, or live streaming of any presentations today. We will now begin the District 56 Humorous Speech Contest. Timekeepers, please time one minute of silence for the first contestant now and give me an audible signal when one minute has expired. One minute has expired. Thank you, Madam Timer. Contestant number one, are you ready with audio and video on? Yes, I am. Antonio Jose Alvarado Rivera the third. The bunches. The bunches. Antonio Jose Alvarado Rivera the third. The bunches. Have you ever heard the bunches? Ugh. That's the sound of the bunches sitting down. Ugh. That's the sound of the bunches standing up. That's right. The bunches are the bunches of years you accumulate in life. And with that accumulation of years, 
you get lots of downtime from strenuous activity. Activity like running or gardening or driving in the car for more than four hours. When did driving become a strenuous activity? But with the bunches, you're going to find out. And with it, you'll have lots and lots of downtime. Oh. Lots and lots of downtime. Ah. But with that downtime, the bunches has given me the solution to a problem that plagues all of us. Unwanted calls from people not in your contact list, telemarketers, scammers, and other annoying calls. There's one now. Hello? Car insurance. Yes, I'm very interested. Hold on just one moment. The bunches have given me a way to get off those buy or die call lists from telemarketers. Let me give you an example. Hello, Mr. Alvarado Rivera. You qualify for solar panels at no out of pocket cost. I'm very interested in solar panels at no out-of-pocket cost. What do I need to do? Well, sir, you just provide us with your address. We'll do an online survey and we'll be able to set you up. That's great. My address is La Quintera, 16500. Well, sir, do you realize that that's an apartment complex? Yes, and there's lots of roofs and I wanna put solar panels on all of them. I can be a millionaire by next year. Sir, we can't put solar panels on apartment complex. Not even if I get permission from the manager? No, sir. What about my parking spot? It's covered and I bet you we can fit a dozen solar panels on that. No, sir, it needs to hook up to the electrical grid. That's great. My balcony, we can hang four, maybe six solar panels off of that and tie them right into the grid in my apartment. No, sir, you don't qualify. I apologize. Thank you for your time. And with that, the bunches had gotten me permanently removed from the solar panel call list. Yes, sir. W one moment. I'm right in the middle of something, but I'll be right with you. The bunches also provide solutions for scammers. Turn the table on those people. When they call, try this. Hello, this is the IRS calling. Your social security number has been used for illegal activity and will be locked out. Hello, in order to continue this call, I will require your 16 digit credit card number and the three digit pin on the back. Sir, this is the IRS. Your social security card is used for fraudulent activity. Not only will I need your 16 digit credit card and the three digit pin, I'll also need the expiration date and your zip code. Sir, your social security card is going to be locked out. I apologize, but without your 16 digit credit card number, I can no longer continue this call. Thank you. Beep. And with that, the bunches had transferred the frustration to the scammer. Hello. Yes, my car's about to hit 100,000 miles, but if you can just hold on for another minute. Thank you. But my favorite is what I call the totally random. Watch and learn what I discovered during my downtime. Hello, Mr. Alvarado Rivera. We're from ABC Corporation, and we would like you to contribute monthly to support us. Have you ever had a Kiwi? Excuse me, sir? Kiwis, these little guys confuse me. Am I supposed to peel them and serve them with a fork 
or am I supposed to cut them in half and serve them with the spoon? I don't know what to do with them. Sir, I'm not really sure how you should serve food. That's okay. Maybe you can help me with artichokes. I'm cooking dinner for my wife and she told me she likes artichokes. Well, I looked up some YouTube videos and you can steam them or boil them. And so I steamed one and it tastes like blah. And so I boiled the other one and it tastes like mush blah. Am I doing this right? Sir, I really can't help you with artichokes. Well, I appreciate your time and your culinary experience, but I need to go finish dinner. So thank you for calling. Uh, you're welcome, sir. The bunches, providing unique solutions to calls from people not in your contact list. You can turn the table on them. You can play with them all kinds of ways. Like this guy, I've had him on hold for over five minutes and oh, he hung up. Five minutes, that's a new record. The bunches, providing the unique solutions to your daily problems. Madam Toastmaster, have you ever had a kumquat? Thank you. Madam Timer, may we have one minute of silence for the next contestant now. Give me an audible signal when one minute has expired. One minute has expired. Thank you, Madam Timer. Contestant number two, are you ready with your audio and video on? Yes, Mr. Toastmaster, can you hear me? Indeed. Joseph Matthew, identity crisis. Identity crisis, Joseph Matthew. Hi, I'm Joseph Matthew. The gentleman took my hand, shook it firmly, looked me in the eye, and with a warm smile said, good to meet you, Matt. Matt? Where did Matt come from? Did I just not introduce myself as Joseph Matthew, international standards, first name, last name, Joseph Matthew? Where did Matt come from? Fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. It became very clear to me early on, 23 years back in my stay in the United States, that this was going to be a lifelong problem for me with my two first names. People would call me Joseph, Joe, Matthew, Matt. There was just confusion about what exactly to call me. And then I realized there was a deeper confusion. And the deeper confusion was a bold colleague said, hey, Joseph, What's your real name, your real Indian name? Oh, at least it was clear that I was Indian. Maybe it was my really thick uh, South Indian accent back then, much thicker, or maybe it was the way I said yes and uh, no. However, as I started to answer, people around me turned to look at me, expecting me to say something like, <laughs> you, know, you know, that is not really my uh, real name. Joseph Matthew is not my real name. That's my American name. My real name is Jeevi Dhammaru and Venmani Mudalali. However, much to that disappointment and almost apologetically, I said, guys, that's my real name. I was born Joseph Matthew into a Christian family in India. So it's Joseph Matthew. Disappointment turned to surprise. Christians in India? 
He said, I can't explain. But I have to go back 2,000 years to the time of Jesus. You know, Jesus was crucified, was buried, and he was raised again. He appeared to his disciples, and when he did the first time, Thomas, one of his disciples, wasn't there. Now, he's called Doubting Thomas for good reason. He said, I will not believe until I have touched the nail marks on Jesus' hands. Well, Jesus was obliged and came again and showed himself to Thomas and said, touch my nail marks. And the Bible says, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. I'm guessing he fell to his knees at that time. It was such a dramatic thing. Now, you may ask, okay, what's that got to do with your name? I'm glad you asked. You know, the disciples and Thomas were so filled and changed by this that they had to go tell everybody. Eventually, they were martyred for it. Now, Thomas went as far as India to spread this message. So Christianity came to India, not through the British, as people think, but through Thomas, the disciple of Jesus, who traveled to India and people believed in his eyewitness account. Now, this is conjecture on my part, but I am guessing that the first four guys who became Christians said, man, we got to take some new names based on our new faith, reflect our new faith, and said, how about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four guys Thomas has been talking about. And Matthew probably said, what do I call my son? I can't call him Jesus. That'd be blasphemy. The next best thing, the father of Jesus, Joseph. Joseph, son of Matthew, Joseph, Matthew. However, there was still confusion amongst all my friends. Is he really Indian? What kind of a name is this? And then the Indianness of me took a twist of its own when I had the opportunity to visit an Indian reservation in Hayes, Montana. We drove from the airport, and as I got out of the car and stepped on Indian soil, this feeling of euphoria went through me from the tip of my toes to the tip of my fingers. And much like Eddie Murphy in the movie Coming to America, I said, peoples of Hayes, Montana, your wait is over. The real Indian is here. I am here. A little boy standing in front of me said, so, Mr. Joseph, what's your real name then? Your real Indian name? Man, I can't escape that question, can I? This identity crisis deepened, and I thought it couldn't get worse, and it did. You know, when I was growing up, my parents called me Joe's, short for Joseph. My Friends, my childhood friends would wish me happy birthday on Facebook. They'd say, happy birthday, Joes. And they would say, uh, fireworks, balloons, candles, happy birthday, Joes. Joes spelled as J-O-S-E, which for all of you is, come on, Jose. So my U.S. friends were like, wait a minute, man. You've been trying to convince us all this time that you are actually Indian. You're actually Mexican. People had asked me if I was Arabic, if I was Guyanese. The identity crisis deepened. It took me into a tailspin until I remembered that I had learned in business school never to waste a crisis. What if I could take this identity crisis and turn it into an identity opportunity? What if I were like Matt Damon in the movie Born Identity, I would go to a nondescript train station, open a nondescript locker, and take out multiple passports with multiple currencies. The first one would say, Jagdeep Mahatma, double agent for India. Second one would say, Jamal Mahmood, triple agent for Saudi Arabia. The third one would say, Jose Martinez, quadruple agent for Mexico. Now, what makes you think I am not these things already? I couldn't tell you, could I? Because if I did, I would have to kill you. But until such a need arises to you, I am Joseph, 
Matthew, or Joe, or Matt, or whatever. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Madam Timer, may we have one minute of silence for the next contestant now. Please give me an audible signal when one minute has expired. I do want to remind all co-hosts that people waiting to enter the room should not be attended unless there is a break in between speeches. Thank you for your consideration. One minute has passed. Thank you, Madam Timer. Contestant number three, are you ready with your video and audio on? Can you hear me? I can. Katajia Kendrick. Face it, I'm addicted. Face it, I'm addicted. Katajia Kendrick. I remember when this all started. I was five years old. Every Saturday, my mom would make a huge breakfast, homemade pancakes, my favorite. Those Saturdays were our laid back Saturdays. But something changed. Those laid back Saturdays became our dreaded Saturdays. My mom would come into my room shaking me, get up, it's time to go. I would get dressed, she would throw me in the car and she's driving on two wheels to get to my grandmother's house. But before we got to my grandmother's house, she would stop me at Hardy's to get me a cinnamon raisin biscuit, delicious. But once we get to my grandmother's house, we'll pick up my grandmother, pick up my aunts, and we're on our way. And they are dragging me place to place to place, looking for their next score. Memories of those Saturdays have haunted me my entire life. But later in life, I realized that I suffer from the same illness. It's been passed down to me. I looked in the mirror and said, face it, you're addicted. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, my name is Katashia and I am addicted to shopping. I love shopping. I could quit, but I am not a quitter. Shopping, it's my football, it's my NFL, and everybody needs a theme song. I'm looking for my husband. He has no idea. The best thing about COVID-19 is online shopping. He has no idea how many packages come through this house on a daily basis. I can put on a new shirt. He would say, babe, is that a new shirt? This old thing? It's old, I've already had this. He has no clue. And my new best friends, they work for Amazon Prime, FedEx, and UPS. Now, when I was little, I hated shopping, hated it. I remember I would literally just pass out waiting for my mom and grandmother to get done. I remember one time the security guard came up to my mother and said, excuse me, ma'am, we're closed. My mom kept shopping 
like the man wasn't even talking to her. But something changed in my spirit when I became a teenager. I fell in love with shopping. And I think it's because I wanted to be a part of that crew. It was awesome hanging out with my family. I loved it. And now that I'm the driver, I can make the rules. My grandmother would say, hey, it's time for a restroom break. Restroom break? No, grandmama, hold it. Okay, I did let my grandmother use the restroom. And I'm driving. Hey, it's time to eat. Let's stop at a restaurant. Restaurant? Oh no, we did not stop at a restaurant. You know why? Because I am an organizer, a drill sergeant. I packed a cooler, sandwiches, chips, cookies, water, soda. We ate in a car, baby, it's halftime. And the best thing about shopping was my grandmother. She never drove a day in her life, but she knew the perfect driving instructions and the best parking spots. My grandmother, if you wanted to ruin the shopping experience, sales associates, please do not say four words. Sold out, rain check, oh my goodness, that would ruin the day, but that's okay. That reminds me, picture this, the year 2000, Black Friday sale outside the Walmart with my grandmother in 30 degree weather. We're outside and it's cold, it's cold. Guess what my grandmother wanted on Black Friday? Air mattresses, who wants air mattresses on Black Friday? My grandmother. And since I'm always down for a shopping experience, I was there. We're outside. I say, Grandma, I checked it out. The air mattresses are in the camping section. When the door is open, I'm going to take off running. Meet me there. Got it? She said, got it. And I took off running like a wide receiver in the NFL. I'm running 50 yard line, 40. 30, 20, 10, camping section. And I'm tired and I'm out of breath. And I look up, guess who I see? My grandmother, how did you beat me to the camping section? She said, baby, you are a rookie in this game and I am a veteran. And we just laugh. Shopping in my family is a tradition and we cherish it. They tried to get us to go to rehab, but we said, no, no, no. Shopping versus therapy, it costs about the same. At least with shopping, I can come home with a great handbag and a great pair of shoes. Now, remember in the beginning, I told you I'm addicted to shopping, but I look at it as that I am stimulating the economy. Now we all, have our vices. Shopping, it's mine. Hmm, wouldn't it be nice if retail therapy was covered by health insurance? Hmm, now that's a thought. Don't judge me, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Madam Timer, may we have one minute of silence for the next contestant now. Please give me an audible signal when one minute has expired.
One minute has expired. Thank you, Madam Timer. Contestant number four, are you ready with your video and audio on? Yes, Mr. Toastmaster, I am ready. Thank you. Wendy Conaway, the great orange caper. The great orange caper, Wendy Conaway. Years ago, I was a travel agent in a very busy corporate travel office. We handled international crew rotations for several oil and gas companies. It was a very stressful, very intense job as it was our responsibility to move large groups of people from their homes to rigs all over the world and then back to their homes in a timely, safe and precise manner. There were about 18 of us in this office, one of whom was my colleague, Sonia. Sonia sat right next to me and she was great. She had a wonderful sense of humor. She was an avid vegetarian and she had a passion for animal rescue, all of which made her the perfect target for the great orange caper. It all started on a Monday morning. On that day, Sonia came into the office, sat down and promptly pulled a plump, juicy looking orange out of her bag and then she set it on the desk. We exchanged good mornings and pleasantries and then we went down to work. Later on that day, when Sonia was on break, I found myself looking at that orange and I just couldn't help myself. No, I didn't eat it. I drew a happy face on it. Isn't it the cutest thing? Doesn't it look like an orange emoji? When Sonia got back to her desk, she looked at that orange and she thought it was adorable. She decided to name it Orange George after Boy George that was all the rage at the time. Boy George? Culture Club? Do you really want to hurt me? Now that we think about it, that was an omen of things to come, wasn't it, Orange George? That afternoon, Sonia debated as to what she would do for the rest of the day. And Orange George sat on her desk for that day and was there when she went home in the evening. On Tuesday morning, Sonia came into the office, sat down, and immediately realized that Orange George was gone. But then she noticed that in his place was a note. And that note said, we have kidnapped your orange. The ransom is 25 cents. And if you ever want to see your orange again, you will place it on the desk overnight. Well, this played perfectly into Sonia's sense of humor. She took that note and she went all around the office asking everybody if they had any clue as to Orange George's whereabouts. Nobody had a clue, at least so they said. She came back to her desk and for the rest of that afternoon, she debated whether or not she should pay the ransom. And at the end of the day, she decided she wasn't going to pay because she wanted to find out what would happen next? On Wednesday morning, Sonia came into the office only to find a small cup of orange peels on her desk. And right next to it was another note. And that note said, we have, obviously you have ignored our first request. And now the torture has commenced. The ransom is now up to 50 cents and you know what to do. As an avid vegetarian, Sonia's peeled her fair share of oranges over time, but never one she's actually bonded with. The entire office was abuzz with what could possibly have happened to Orange George, where he could have been taken and 
who would be so cruel as to torture a poor innocent orange like that? At the end of that day, Sonia decided she was going to write her own note to the kidnappers. Her note said, I demand the immediate and safe return of my orange. And if you don't, I'm going to report you to PETO. For those of you who are not familiar with this organization, PETO stands for the People for the Ethical Treatment of Oranges, donations accepted. She placed the note on her desk and went home. On Thursday morning, Sonia came into the office only to find another cup. But this time it had orange juice in it. And yes, there was another note. This note said, tisk, tisk, it appears you haven't taken us seriously. The ransom is now $1. And if you don't pay, your orange will be slowly juiced to death. Well, that did it. That broke her. At that moment, Sonia knew she had to rescue poor Orange George. And at the end of the day, she left a dollar bill on the desk, hoping it would secure the safe return of her precious Orange. She came into the office on Friday, only to find a group of people around her desk. She made her way through the group of people, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. And there he was, Orange George, he was a little pale in places where he'd been peeled. He was a little skinnier for having been juiced, but overall, he was really glad to be back. As a matter of fact, he got a standing ovation from the entire office for his safe return. Esteemed Toastmasters, guests, and judges, the moral of the great orange caper is that a little humor can go a long way to reducing office stress. Don't knock, knock it till you've tried it. Aren't you glad we told you this story? Mr. Toastmaster, back to you. Thank you. Madam Timer, may we have one minute of silence for the next contestant now. Please give me an audible signal when one minute has expired. One has expired. Thank you, Madam Timer. Contestant number five, are you ready with your audio and video on? Yes, sir. Jessica Vanderpool, calling all dumpster fires. Calling all dumpster fires, Jessica Vanderpool. My friend Delilah is a dumpster fire. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. We all know one. They're the people who put their clothes on inside out, walk out the door with two different shoes on their feet, or spill more food on their shirt than they put in their mouth. We all have that one friend and Delilah's mine. She's a crazy, chaotic, beautiful mess. And I'm here to share her story and the lessons she's taught me along the way. Mr. Contest Chair, Esteemed judges, guests, allow me to begin by painting for you a truly terrifying picture, Delilah dating. I don't know how many of you have experience in, with the travesty that is online dating, but going on a first date is like participating in table topics for two hours straight. 
with a complete stranger. And you're interviewing for the position of till death do us part, no pressure. So you can imagine how nervous Delilah might have been to go to this first meeting with this online fella, but she has a plan. You have to also be careful of dating safety in, case, in addition to awkward conversation. According to HuffPost.com, the CEO of Beautiful People, which is an online dating site, wrote that he commissioned a survey in 2011 that showed that more than 50% of people lied, 50% of respondents lied on their dating profile. So you really have to be cautious. That's why she has a twofold plan. First, call a friend and let her know everything about the date, where she's going, who she's going with, everything about the guy. And then she establishes a time that she'll check back in with that friend at the end of the day to make sure that that friend knows she's safe at home and not dead in the trunk of that guy's car. Well, on this particular day, she executed that pretty well. In retrospect, maybe a little too well because she gave her friend all this guy's details, including his cell phone number in case of emergencies. What she didn't do as well was follow up with that safety phone call. She thought the date was going pretty well. I think that she should have known the date was tanking when he said he owned ferrets. That's ferrets, plural. But she's an optimist. So, you know, she kept going on the date and she thought, this is great. It'd be rude to pull out my phone. My friend will figure out I'm okay. It's fine. It was not fine. She figured out just how not fine it was at the end of the evening when this guy pulled out his phone to a series of missed calls from Delilah's friend and a vaguely threatening voicemail demanding that he have her call her friend back and verify she was okay. Delilah was mortified. How could she ever face this guy again? But she didn't have to because as you can imagine, he never called, which was just as well because, well, ferrets. But it doesn't take a romantic situation to get Delilah in trouble. She can get in trouble anywhere with anyone. Let me tell you about the time she went to a ropes course with her friends. Now, for those who don't know, a ropes course is just an obstacle course that like 20 feet in the air. So she'd had a pretty good experience with a ropes course in the past. So she was feeling, dare I say, a little bit cocky. She forgot she was at the mercy of things like gravity and every other single law of nature. So after about an hour of flailing, falling, and generally proving science right, she spied at the top of the course an obstacle she felt with a disturbing amount of confidence she just had to tackle. So she tromped to the top of the course and she stood before it. It was a series of barrels, a couple feet of space between each one, and she began leaping across them. Now Delilah has all the grace of a baby giraffe learning to walk. So she fell obviously. That wasn't the problem. The problem was she couldn't get back up. So she signaled for the course supervisor to come over and help her out. She expected simply a helping hand, but got so much more. He came and rigged up a harness rope type system and he hooked her harness to his harness and wrenched her up off the course until she dangled with her face mere inches from his buttocks. And then he wrenched her back to safety as she bounced barrel by barrel by her while her friend videoed from below. Delilah, how do you get yourself into these situations? She's definitely one of those people you just can't take anywhere. She's what the kids call NSFW, and not safe for work. My last story will prove it. Delilah was in the break room chatting with a friend. Everything was going well, nothing was amiss that she knew of. But things had already gone very awry and she was about to find out why. Her friend took one look at her. She looked her up and down, said, Lila, what is this coming out of your pants? Ladies and gentlemen, nothing good comes after someone says, what is hanging out of your pants? Lila looked down and saw what she could only describe as a fabric tail. She begins pulling and pulling and pulling and she just keeps pulling and it just keeps coming until she holds an entire sweater. And I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, how had it gotten there? How had it been there all morning, all through her drive to work, walk to the break room, conversation with her friends? How had she not known she was wearing sweater pants? And the only answer I have for you is Delilah. Delilah's the answer to all things ridiculous. No one can understand her, no one can explain her. People seem to like her. For me though, she's been a bit of an acquired taste. You see, 
Delilah is more than just my friend. Delilah is a piece of me. To be honest, Delilah is me. She's my alter ego. She's the clumsy, embarrassing part of me that makes the rest of me just want to melt into the floor. But through the years, she's grown on me because Delilah has taught me something. She's taught me about confidence and humility, about laughter. She's taught me we're all alike in our humanity. We should stop pretending that we're not. So let's learn to laugh at ourselves. Let's learn to live a little. Let's learn to love ourselves for the beautiful messes that we are. So bring on the dating disasters and the gravity fails and the sweater pants fiascos. Delilah and I are here to take on the world one shenanigan at a time. And if you're up for an adventure, we invite you and your inner dumpster fire to join us. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. Madam Timer, may we have one minute of silence for the next contestant now. Please give me an audible signal when one minute has expired. One minute has expired. Thank you, Madam Timer. Contestant number six, are you ready with your audio and video on? Yes, I am. Thank you. John Rich Levine, Hotel Towels. Hotel Towels, John Rich Levine. Sneaking outside my hotel room, I saw myself in front of a mirror. No shoes, no socks, no shirt, no pants, no underwear, just a towel wrapped around my waist. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, why are you laughing already? You enjoyed that description, did you? You imagine how stupid I look? Yes, me too. 1997, I was 26. Las Vegas presentation. Checked into Caesar's Palace, room full of towels. They have foot towels, bath towels, hand towels, bed towels, foot towels, and a spare towel neatly arranged. More towels than I can use in a week? Cool. I like towels. I don't mind having more. As I arrived, drained, threw off my shoes, my socks, my shirt, my pants, my underwear, crash landed on the bed, nothing on, just a towel wrapped around my waist. Wake up in the morning, same exact description. Ordered breakfast in bed. After eating, decided to place the tray outside the door on the hallway floor. And an inner voice says, you are an idiot. An idiot. Do I care? It's early morning, nobody's around. As the door opened, I saw myself on the hallway mirror. No shoes, no socks, no shirt. No pants, no underwear, just a towel wrapped around my waist. I quickly placed the tray on the floor. As I bent, the towel fell off my waist inside the room. I was outside the room and the door clicked. At that time, I didn't know which one to cover. I pick up the tray, I pick up the plate, the saucer, the cup, none would sit to work. By then, two 
people were passing by. I mean, it took me to pray. I was stuck to the wall. I knocked next door for help. A middle-aged woman in her late 70s. Oops, sorry, wrong room. She said, no, you're not in the wrong room, baby. You're in the right room for me. No, thanks. I lost my keys. I decided to seek help from the front desk, two floors down the hall. The clerk of doom and gloom says, may I help you? I was locked out. Can I have a spare key? He looked at me from head to toe, stopped in the middle. Do you have any identification? Any driver's license? Sir, I am naked. He finally got me a spare key and off I went to the elevator. You'd think I learned my lesson. An inner voice says, you are an idiot. Is when the elevator door opened, 10 people stepped out fully dressed and I was, well, fully naked. I said, pardon me, locked out, had to have a spare key. All ignored me, quietly looked in all directions but me. As the doors closed, I could hear boisterous laughter, echoing, mocking, humiliating. I hurried, got dressed, checked I had all the clothes on. Because when it's time to speak, nerves grumbled. You had better be better before any other disaster takes over. Because my topic was, are you ready for this? Dressing for success. <laughs> dressing for success, no kidding, no cover up. I was ruined. I sat there thinking of quitting and running. I thought and thought until I thought my dad once said, all things happen for a purpose. Use them to your advantage. All things happen for a purpose. Use them to your advantage. All things happen for a purpose. Use them to your advantage. I regained courage, stood, climbed the stage, and started my presentation on dressing for success. Ask the audience, by a show of hands, how many of you here this morning had the chance to see me naked? Ten people raised their hands. Seriously? You'll die if you were me. You could tell they were the same 10 people in that elevator, breathing, sweating, but pretending it's nothing. I fired up, used that awkward moment as an example, comparing dressing for success to nakedness in public. To succeed, you gotta get dressed. To gain better confidence, you gotta get dressed better. Don't be stressed, get dressed. An inner voice says, you are good. Ladies and gentlemen, embarrassing situations or when you do something stupid, all happen for a purpose. Use them to your best advantage. Remember, what's more important than a towel wrapped around your waist? a room key wrapped around your neck. When you step out, you will never know what can happen next when your door clicks. Contest chair. Thank you. Madam Timer, may we have one minute of silence for the next contestant now. Please give me an audible signal when one minute has expired.
One minute has expired. Thank you, Madam Timer. Contestant number seven, are you ready with your audio and video on? Yes, I am. Thank you. Ellie Hard, Jack the Rooster. Jack the Rooster, Ellie Hard. Luis was my best friend. Luis and I, preschoolers, couldn't wait for the summertime. Luis and I used to spend our summers together on the backyard of our grandparents. His grandparents and my grandparents had a duplex house down by the central station. And with the beginning of the summer, our sets of parents used to dispatch us to our grandparents. And we used to play in this beautiful backyard, Louis and I, under the blooming trees, under the flowering lilacs. We loved it. This summer, his grandparents had to have an anniversary of sort. And one day his grandparent, his grandfather brought us a real rooster. Now, can you believe that? Small city kids, no siblings, no pets. Suddenly we have a real rooster because at the anniversary, the rooster had to become a rooster stew, a famous dish. Now, Luis and I now have a summer job. We had to fatten him up. Oh, this rooster was amazing. He had the yellow scaly legs. He had a beautiful red plumage. He had a red comb and a one long green feather at his tail. When he was taking a nap, his eyes were, were closing upward. Amazing. We were absolutely amazed with him. And he was go around and he will peck little stones and then we will give him seeds to eat. And life was good until one morning, Louis was waiting for me outside much earlier than usual. Hey, Ellie, Ellie, he said, Ellie, do you know what? His red, cheeks were red, his ears were red, his eyes were sparkling. What? I said, Jack eats newspapers. What? I said, you liar. Just, they don't eat newspapers. What are you talking about? I'll show you. And he's showing me a piece of paper. And here is Jack. He pulls it out and just ate it. He did. May I try? Yeah, he gave me another piece of paper and there comes Jack and woo, pulled it out and ate it. Did you see that? He ate it again. Oh, that started a new chapter in our summer. Every morning, Louis and I couldn't wait for our grandfathers to finish their morning newspapers. We will grab the newspaper and we will go to the backyard and we will feed it to the rooster. Newspaper with uh, milk, newspaper with peanut butter, newspaper with salt, his favorite. Newspaper with sugar, newspaper with whatever you can think of. He will eat that. Oh, he was growing big and beautiful and everything was great this summer until the day came when uh, we knew that Jack is going to the rooster's heaven. We were sad, small children. We had to face life. But suddenly, from his part of the house, there was some commotion. Something was going on. His grandmother was crying and his grandfather was yelling some words that we were not allowed to repeat. And something was happening. A terrible thing was happening. And then later we found out the stew meat was black. <gasps> 
Well, guys, some of you may remember that back in the days, the newspapers were printed with real ink. And early in the morning, the ink even could stay on your fingers and color your fingers. This ink smelled delicious. That was an amazing, delicious cocktail of lead and heavy metals. Jack was poisoned, but he was happy. And but his grandparents, Louis's grandparents were, were not. They threw the meat out of the alley cats. The alley cats won't eat it. Jack ended up in a trash can. The next morning, Louis and I continued to grieve. We dug him out of the trash can to give him a proper Christian burial. We dug a hole and buried him in the backyard under the blooming trees made a little cross from the pebbles that he liked to eat. He was wrapped in newspaper, the Sunday edition. And that was the story. He's probably still there. He's probably never decomposed, but that was our story. And we small children were just sitting there learning our life lessons. The first one was, Beware of people who push food on you. Two, the best tasting food may not be good for you. And three, always take your news with a grain of salt. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Everyone, please remain silent at this time while the judges complete and submit their ballots. Mr. Chief Judge, please send an audible signal when all ballots have been received. Mr. Toastmaster, we're still waiting some ballots. Thank you.
Thank you for your patience, everyone. Mr. Toastmaster, all ballots have been cast. Uh, will the host please send us the myself and the ballot counters to the breakout room? Thank you, Mr. Chief Judge. Before the results, we will now get to know our contestants a little bit better with a short interview. Contestants, please unmute your microphone and turn on your video when I call your name. We are going to start in the order of the speakers. Antonio Jose Alvarado Rivera III. Howdy. How's it going? Doing great. Excellent. How long have, uh, if you could tell us how long you've been in Toastmasters, which club you're representing and, and where you are on your Pathways journey? I've been in Toastmasters for four years now. I started with Silver Tongue Toastmasters in College Station, briefly moved to San Antonio, and then came back to Toastmasters in uh, College Station. I currently live in Washington County, but thanks to video, I am able to participate with my home club and remain a member without the 45 to one hour drive. I'm currently level four on my um, distinguished leader pathway. And I started engaging humor earlier this year, which is the reason I joined this contest. Very apt. Well, congrats on taking the big step and getting the contest and, and, be, and being a finalist. I saw that maybe this relates to where you live. You mentioned that you are a big fan of pecan and fruit trees. Is that just for fun or is there more to that story? My wife and I were searching for a country property for over 20 years. And never found something that fit our needs in a price range that we could afford until June 6 of last year when we drove by this property and stopped after looking at two other properties that frustrated us. We purchased it, moved in during all the COVID and discovered that we had 17 pecan trees. Later we recounted and we now are up to 23 pecan trees. So obviously we have enough acres to hide pecan trees. We took one of our acres and made an orchard out of it. So there's the fruit trees. And with spring arriving, we discovered the growth of poison ivy on a large portion of our property. So add to that list, the future addition of a goat family. I finished building what my wife refers to as the goat mansion, uh, 10 by 20 pin for them. That she says is much too pretty for rural goats, but they'll have a place to stay. That is incredible. Congratulations on all those findings. <laughs> and you. I'm sure the goats is gonna be a fun journey as well. Thank you again. Thank you. Joseph Matthew. You could tell us how long you've been in Toastmasters, the club you're representing, and where you are in your journey with Pathways. Mr. Toastmaster, I believe my video has been stopped by the host, so I believe uh, they would have to turn it on. I will note that you have a lovely portrait that we're looking at. All and right, there, you go. Better. there we go, okay. <laughs> Sorry, could you ask your question again? Yes, yes. So if you could uh, to tell us a little bit about how long you've been in Toastmasters, a three part here, how long you've been in Toastmasters, the club you're representing and your journey in Pathways. Oh, I have been in Toastmasters for about, I would say 15 years, started at uh, HP Houston Toastmasters back in the day. And then for several years did not participate because of travel. It just happened too frequently to be able to go regularly. But that's where my journey started. And then I'm currently with my, I'm representing here my employer as Toastmaster Club, which is the Aspen Tech Houston Toastmasters. And uh, my journey, I am on level three in the strategic relationships uh, pathway. And uh, I have to say, prior to this year, I have never tried to give a humorous speech. I think I tried several years back, it was a big flop. Um, but that's what Toastmaster does for you, right? Just stretch your limits a little bit, see if it works. Yes, yes, very much so. Uh, I saw that one of your interests uh, is traveling. And I was curious if there, if you were to give us advice about some place that we have to go 
uh, in, in our lives, where would that be? Maybe there's a, an accompanying story. You know, you would expect, I'd say, go to Bahrain or Guyana or someplace, Mexico, where I'm from, or to India. But I would say, go to New Zealand. New Zealand, I had the, my family had the opportunity about six years back to visit uh, New Zealand. And we went to South Island, perhaps some of the most picturesque views that we have ever seen. We would drive out and then to some places just stop because it was just breathtakingly beautiful. We said, we have to take this in. And a trip site would have, should have taken two hours, three hours would take eight. Uh, it was just too good to pass up. I'd say New Zealand, South Island. Sold, sign me up. All right, uh, thank you, Joseph. Appreciate your speech. Ketashia Kendrick. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Excellent, excellent. Very entertaining speech. We are excited to ask you a few questions similarly to the other contestants. Tell us how long you've been in Toastmasters, the club you're representing, and your journey and pathways. Yes, I am a member of Word Crafters Toastmaster. I've been in Toastmasters for two years, um, two years. I am the current VPE in the club, and I just completed my level three in presentation mastery. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I saw you had put something as a hobby. Uh, and for me, I think I maybe just may not, it didn't make sense. So I was curious if you could maybe explain uh, a little bit more of your enthusiasm around integrative health. Where does that come from and, and how does it relate to all of us? Well, um, not a hobby, it's my profession. <laughs> um, functional medicine and integrative health, just treating the whole patient, looking at the root cause of your issue versus um, treating your symptoms. And so that is what I would like to do for my patients and clients. So looking at the overall patient, holistic health, and using not just traditional medicine, but all types of medicine to heal the patient. Interesting. That's very insightful. Is there uh, a particularly useful alternative remedy that you would recommend or is that unique to each individual? You took the words out of my mouth. It's individualized. I couldn't tell you. It all depends on the patient and going through a full assessment before we can come up with a treatment plan. Fantastic. Thanks for the insight. Um, thank you for everything you do. Thank you so much. Wendy. Conaway. Hello, Mr. Toastmaster. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you for asking. Uh, hopefully, yeah, you, you, you seem like you're doing excellent, uh, maybe always doing excellent if you're drawing smiles on oranges. Uh, so uh, similar questions to you. How long you been in Toastmasters, Wendy? What club are you representing today in your journey, where you're at in Pathways? Thank you for asking. I've been in Toastmasters for all of nine months. I am affiliated proudly with HP Houston Toastmasters, and I am just about to complete my level two of presentation mastery. That is incredible. Uh, if I'm curious, uh, given how long you've been in Toastmasters, what inspired you to get involved or what was the impetus? I have struggled with public speaking, stage fright, all of those similar issues for a very long period of time. And I realized that, that at some point I just needed to take the steps to address it. I'd heard of Toastmasters in the past and I thought now is the time for me to get, to get on it and to get busy with it. And just to tell you how positive I am about it, I've introduced it into my university and now we have we are starting Toastmasters clubs for our students. We have over 600 interested students to start Toastmasters in the next few months. So I am promoting, I am walking the walk and talking the talk. No doubt about that. And you're here as a finalist in the Humorous Contest. Congratulations on that. And thanks for being Thank such you. a great ambassador. Thank you. Jessica Vanderpool. Yes, Mr. Toastmaster. 
I'm so sorry I said that. Thank you so much. Yes, <laughs> welcome. Uh, if you could tell us how long you've been in Toastmasters, which club you're representing today, and your journey and pathways. Sure. I am a founding member of UT Health Speaks, and I've been a member there for seven months. And I am working on level two in presentation mastery. Congratulations. Uh, let's see here. You had said a couple interesting things. One was that you are on a search and rescue team. Yes. And I, I guess, can you tell us how you got involved with that? Sure. We had a family friend come out and kind of show us a little bit about tracking human footprints. And I found it fascinating. It was just a little bit of a educational thing one day, kind of random. And I thought, that sounds amazing. And then I read a book about a search and rescue team. And I thought, that sounds fascinating and a great way to serve the community. And so I just kind of, when I moved to Houston in 2016, I started Googling teams and, and found one. And at the request of law enforcement, we can go out and find missing people. And we have dogs trained, but we also have people who will go out and work with maps and compasses and help look for things like footprints. And it's a great way to serve the community and an interesting thing to learn about. No doubt, thankful that there's people um, like yourself that have, have that passion, enthusiasm, commitment. Uh, the last thing I guess I saw you uh, are a drawer. Uh, is there a favorite place you like to go to draw in, in Houston? Oh, I, I don't have a specific favorite place. I, especially during COVID, I've curled up on my couch a lot <laughs> with, with my markers and, but any, any kind of coffee house or you know diner or anything like that where I can sit down with like a glass of soda or a coffee and just like settle in that's my favorite excellent thank you we're going to welcome up John Rich Levine yes sir how are you doing today that was I'm doing uh, very well uh, we love to hear how long you've been in Toastmasters, what club you're representing, and, and where you are in your Pathways journey. I have been with Toastmaster for a while. I guess it's going to be give or take six years. And I belong to two clubs, the Rising Stars Toastmasters Club and the Sugarland Toastmasters Club in Houston. And what was the other question you said? Yes, uh, well, one second here. I think we're, we're having some video. Have you turned your video on, John Rich? I'm not sure if the Zoom master might be able to. There we go. Okay, now we can see you. Yes. Oh, you can see me, huh? Yes. Magic. We love to see that, that smiling face. There we go. Right. Uh, the, the last question was where you are in your pathways journey. With oh, in my pathways, right? So in the olden days, we never used a pathway, but we were in a pathway, right? And now we call it pathway finally. And... I didn't quite understand what the pathway was until I was in level three. So I got stuck there in level three and I said, I'm gonna join a contest so that I can move on. And so I'm in level three with the, uh, help me think, engaging in humor. Okay, perfect. That's, that's incredible. You are able to knock two birds with one stone here. Uh, let's see, you had, had mentioned as a hobby that you are an entertainer, you're a singer. So, I guess, where would you recommend, um, is there a certain venue that you have that's a favorite uh, to either watch singers and or be on stage as a singer? <laughs> I put that there and, and as an entertainer so I can entertain you, right? I, I, I entertain myself, so I sing to myself around uh, my, my room mostly in front of my desk. <laughs> Do we call that entertainment? So th there's not a, there's no other venue uh, that you would no. know if we were to go. Oh, you mean going somewhere? I don't sure. know. No. Anywhere, anywhere where you can express yourself. <laughs> uh, and I guess you also said you were a fan of the outdoors. Uh, yes, I like the outdoors. Your special so. trail uh, in Houston that you that you recommend. Oh. Um, Outdoors for me means anywhere outside of my house. So that could be right around here. There is a golf course. There is a park anywhere. I like, I like the trails that I go to once in a while in the Grand Canyon because that's a, I kind of like make that as a tradition to go there every once in a while, every year, at least once. And we go back, backpacking or like hiking down those trails and it's fun. Wow. And that's yeah. it. 
is it a tour guide? We're, we're all going to contact you if we. Uh, <laughs> if yes, that's uh, another professional fee there, huh? There we go. Uh, thank you, John Rich. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, John. Ellie Hard. Hello, Ellie. How are you doing? Hello, I'm doing great. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, well, tell us how long you've been in Toastmasters and the club you're representing and, and where you are in your Pathways journey. I am going to celebrate in June next month, 25 years with Toastmasters. I am a true veteran, uninterrupted membership for 25 years. I'm representing uh, Dining Out Toastmasters today. And I have so far three DTMs in a legacy program in Pathways. I finished Presentation Mastery and I am playing with two other Pathways, mostly in elective part of it so that I can, I, I have more interesting projects uh, over there, yes. Very accomplished. Thank you for highlighting that. Congrats. Um, we, we have much to learn from you, no doubt. Uh, you had put as a hobby that you're a, a cross stitcher. Could you elaborate maybe on what, what is cross stitching? I think I know what it is, but uh, what, what it is and, and how you got started uh, with that hobby. I started by accident while flying at the, at the long flight and I just bought one little thing and I started cross teaching. This is like an embroidery where you go with the floss like little crosses. And then during the pandemic, I started almost mass production. I did so many different things. I'm so uh, um, really into it because while I'm cross teaching, I'm listening to books on, on, you know, uh, so I, I do two things. And let me show you just the one that I can, I can reach here, see something like that. This is a very kind of Victorian like um, traditional cross teaching. Yeah, but I have, I have Indian mandalas, I have all kinds of things that I'm doing and I just can't stop now. So sorry to say. Can't that stop. is that is beautiful, Ellie. Where can <laughs> we uh, purchase one of those from you? Um, huh. Well, let me think about that, and I'll get back to you on with the price. Coming <laughs> soon, Etsy store. All right. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Ellie, um, and thank you for all your uh, Toastmasters inspiration. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, fellow Toastmasters. Let's give all our contestants another big, big round of virtual applause. Toastmasters and guests, it has been my honor and pleasure to serve as your Toastmaster this morning for our humorous contest. After this contest, I'm going to take a quick break from our spring conference to help a friend out. Um, you see, I, she recently decided she needed to quit her job at the donut factory. She was fed up with the whole business. Okay, really, uh, but, but really, my cheeks are sore from smiling so much. My belly hurts from all that laughing. My spirit is lifted with all the creative energy that is so plentiful in our District 56. To all of our finalists and all of our humorous contestants throughout this entire journey, we thank you for the world-class entertainment. At this time, my duties as your Toastmaster for this contest are complete. I will now return control to our humorous speech contest chair, distinguished Toastmaster, Fatima Jones. Thanks very much, John. It was a great contest. We are still waiting a few more minutes. For, oh, I'm gonna go get my computer. For the winners to be uh, announced. And so just be in suspense, just a few more minutes. But while we're waiting, 
Do we have any comments from our district director or our product, uh, quality con director, Rose or Joe? Would you like to have any comments at this time? Good afternoon, everyone. I figured you probably don't want to hear my voice anymore. <laughs> But I have to give kudos and congratulations to every contestant for doing a great job. I hope each of you are proud of yourself. I know I am. And for all of you who are in the background making the contest work, I know it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work in person. And when you add the electronic component to it, it really intensifies. So thank you each and every one for the organization, for the implementation, and for the success of this contest on today. Uh, program quality is responsible for these speech contests. So I'm gonna yield the rest to Joe. Wasn't that a great contest? Congratulations to all contestants. Thank you functionaries for making this a wonderful, successful contest. We appreciate your work. We know it's a lot, but look at the end result. Wonderful speeches. Great job, John. I love that beard going on. You're really rocking it there. And we have some other great rock stars in the house. Thank you for all that you do, stepping up, getting up, and speaking. It's not the easiest thing to do. Yet you guys have made it to the district finals. Congratulations, and I can't wait to hear who is going to be crowned our district humorous winner. Back to you, Fatima. Thank you, Joe. Just a couple of more minutes, guys. Hold that suspense. I'm going to. Um, turn off my video for just a couple of minutes and I'll be back. Okay, not a problem. Did you know that we're going to have several, let's say four breakout sessions coming up at 12.30 1245. The first one's going to be how tips on how to succeed in pathways. We also have all about free Toast hosts. Navigating Toastmasters international website and reports. And for all you people wanting to have fun, there's the group trivia and scavenger hunt. Woohoo! Charlotte, would you like to talk about your session and then we'll move to the other presenters? Thank you so much, Madam Quality, Program Quality Director. Yes, I would. For those that want to be energized and have a little fun, we do have a wonderful engaging scavenger hunt. We have humorous table topics and we have our District 56 Got Talent because our Toastmasters are so talented. Wait till you see who's going to be crowned our District 56 Got Talent Champion. Hope to see you all then. Thank you, Madam Program Quality Director. Thank you, Charlotte. Tammy, are you online? Could you talk about your navigating Toastmasters International website and reports? Tammy's not here, but I am happy to talk about our navigating Toastmasters International. We will be sharing tips for helping you navigate as a member, club officer, or a club. So there are so many things that we want to help you learn. So many cool aspects of the website that we want to bring out to you. Come join us at 1245 in the Houston room for navigating Toastmasters International website. Thank you, Ray Ann. We're ready whenever you are. 
Okay, I want to give a shout out to the free toast host, that Z and, and Padma, and also tips on how to succeed in pathways. Jan, Sally, and Max will be your facilitator, discussion leaders for that session. Back to you, Fatima. Oh. Give me a second, guys. Not a problem. My presentation is closed. Just take your time. You go off camera until you get it right. I understand how that works. It happened to me this morning. John, <laughs> Tim Stroud is saying more jokes from John. Do you have any more? Oh, I'm an aspiring pun artist, but I have much, much room to grow. Uh, you know, I was thinking, uh, I guess a question on that topic of growth uh, you know, how much room should you give fungi to grow? It's a question that I've always thought to myself, how much room should you give fungi to grow? As much room as possible. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. I didn't like that joke at first, John, but it's, it's growing on me. <laughs> Okay. Can you guys hear me? Sorry for those technical difficulties. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm going to announce the winners. Can I get, when the name comes up, we just spotlight the person. We're gonna announce the third place winner. The third place winner for this contest is John Rich Levine. A round of applause. I was hoping we'd be able to see his picture, but it doesn't look like it. Our second place winner is Katasha Kendrick. And the first place winner for the humorous contest is Ellie Hard. So now that we've announced the winners for this grand contest, this contest is adjourned. Thank you for your participation. Hey, David Bell, give me a call, please. Will do, I saw your message too, so I'll call you. Okay, thank you. Congratulations, all winners. Yay, great, great contest. Good job, everyone. Good job, Fatima. You guys did a wonderful job. Congratulations, Ellie. Congratulations, Ellie. Hey, congratulations, too. Thank you from me and the Black Jack. <laughs> Congrats, all. That was great, Ellie.